Well, I'm joined now by the British Olympic marathon runner, Mara Yamauchi, and by rapper and podcast host, Zuby. Great to see you here, Zuby, who once took part in a weightlifting competition four years ago as a woman to kind of prove a point. And guess what? He won. And by talk TV contributor Paula Rowan Adrian, who will still be attempting to defend the indefensible on this issue. Well, Glenique Frank, uh, just to be clear, or Glenn Frank, whichever uh, Glenn or Glenique is identifying as this week, was invited to appear but pulled out this morning. And like I say, uh, Glenique or Glenn, again, we don't know because Glenique's going back to being Glenn in future races and has always run as Glenn before, um, did, did say it was wrong. Uh, but you are asked when you enter the London Marathon which category do you want to run in, male or female or non-binary. It's ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous, as I keep saying. But there are still people who think this is perfectly fair and equal and we should all just stop making such a fuss about it. So let's have a little chat about this. Uh, well, Zuby, let me start with you because you've come all the way in here. Great to see you in London. I love the fact that you tested all this four years ago and you did it to raise the problem as an issue. And, of course, you demolished all the females that you were up against because physically, as a biological male, you're simply more powerful. But you exposed the futility, if you like, and unfairness and inequality of self-identity if it becomes limitless like this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been talking for more than five years at this point, but especially the past four publicly about the absurdity of the issue. And that's why back in February 2019, I had that tweet I put out there with a video of me breaking the British women's deadlift record while claiming I identified as a woman. You literally broke the women's record. Yeah. It was, mean so to be clear, it wasn't in a sanctioned competition, but it was from one of my training sessions just showing how easily I could lift a weight that's Well, we're looking at it now. Kilos. This is you as a woman. Yeah, it wasn't right. exactly difficult. Lifting about 17 Paula Rowan Adrian, <laughs> I would imagine. And I know you like a bit of weightlifting, Paula, so why don't yeah. you try and lift a bit of that later in your gym? We'll it's see how you get on. Later. Here's yeah. a spoiler alert. You won't be able to. <laughs> um, not because you're not a very strong lady and not because you're not a very committed athlete in your own but right. because of the biological differences. Now, do you get it? Myself, is the penny Zuby. dropping? So I get it, but what I wonder is whether you get it, Piers. What, what am I missing? What, what I wonder is why it is you're struggling with the fact that some people are different. I don't. And, and the people who have decided that they are different yeah. and who want to live a different life, yeah. some of them have the capacity to do that medically and legally, mm -hmm. and they should be permitted totally to do that. Totally respect that. that. Always have done, always supported so trans where... people's rights to fairness and equality. Okay, so right, to, right to the point, it clearly erodes women's rights. That's my only concern about it. So where the absurdity comes, I worry, is where we've got this example of the marathon runner. Mm. And this was a fun run. It's the marathon. It's, it's not a fun a run. Great it's example. not a fun run. It's a great example. No, no, no. Example Tens of thousands of, of people London raise a ton of money absolutely. and it's a serious competitive race. It's a great example of people getting the opportunity to push themselves, mm. not only personally, but also in terms of their charitable mm. charities. And this is a person who did that. And they are now no, so, so somebody, fearful, so this somebody person. Entered... They're so fearful. They've had to apologise. They've had to offer to hand back their medal. Well, they weren't Why? that fearful because Glenn entered as Glenn Eek and Glenn Eek finished a lot further in the race in the women's field than Glenn would have done in the men's field. And how relevant is that to you, Piers? Actually, to everyone how, I know, to everybody to I you? know that races in the London Marathon, this wasn't... every position... Counts. They all so want to improve the their time. They it all... wasn't a gold medal in actually, the Olympics. Actually, the ones... This was the about front runners in the London Olympics. It was about taking part. So you think it's meaningless, the London Marathon? No, absolutely it's not. It's actually I've taken... Could, I've, I've competed it's actually in one the London more... Marathon, right. and I see... And people running past me, I see people running past me of all different sizes, shapes, uh, running for all different types of causes, and that's what it's all about. It's inclusivity. All right, but it's let me bring in an actual Olympian rather than somebody who sounds like she thinks she ought to be one. Uh, Mara, you've been listening very patiently uh, to all this. You've been a, a yeah. proper athlete here. Just try and explain to me, or to Paula, really, why this is so unfair. So males and females have... Uh, there's a massive difference in our physical abilities. In upper body strength, like in Zuby's uh, bench press and deadlift... Uh, women's world records, you know, there's a massive, massive difference. In running, it's about 10%. Therefore, we must have 
sex-based categories male and female, otherwise females would be entirely absent from sport. And to answer Paula's point about it being a fun run, yes, a lot of people in, enjoy it and do great things like raising money, but Glenn could have done that in the men's category and not caused unfairness for the 20,000-odd females who ran in the in the mass race. I have to also clarify that Glenn ran as Glenn in the Tokyo Marathon last month, but also in the women's category, as he did in London. And, you know, you can say, well, the mass race is just a bit of fun, the mass race at the London Marathon. But an event like that is either a sports competition or it isn't. If you're going to say it's just a fun run, then why do they have a measured course? Why do they have timing equipment and a referee to enforce the rules? You know, even if people enjoy themselves and, and, earn, and raise money for charity, it still is a, competi a competition, rules matter, and people have to respect the rules. And Glenn on, on GB News gave an interview last night. It was clear he had no idea what the rules are. He was talking about uh, surgery and passports, but the rules, British athletics rules, which apply to the London Marathon, required testosterone suppression to under five nanomoles for 12 months to become eligible mm. and then continue suppression to remain eligible. He was talking about hormone therapy in the future tense, so it's clear he's done no testosterone suppression at all. He wasn't eligible for the female category. And therefore, my view is he should be disqualified because he, he hasn't... He's just not... He's not eligible. Well, no question. There's um, no question of that. I mean, what's interesting to me, two things about, about you in particular. One, your courage in speaking out about this because you were, of course, immediately bombarded with insults and abuse and threats. You called a transphobe, a yeah. turf, their favourite phrase, for stating yeah. what are simple biological facts. But also, you are, by your own admission, you're slightly left-leaning. You're not on the right. You're not trying to score some political point against the left. Yeah. And like a lot of people, I mean, I, you yeah. know, I've i always probably politically been slightly left to centre, maybe centre. I'm really a journalist. I don't really care about an ideology either way, to be honest with you. But um, I'm certainly not on the right. But like a lot of people, like you, like me, like Bill Maher interviewed last week in America, we find ourselves completely bemused that people so-called liberals... Yeah on this ultra-woke side now of the, of the spectrum, have lost their minds. Yeah. I mean, I've been a centre-left voter all my life, but for me, this isn't about left or right. For me, this is about the rights to safety, dignity, privacy, and in sport, fair competition and safety for 51% of the population. And people say, oh, Glenique only finished 6,100 and something, you know, get a life. But nearly 14,000 women suffered a worse finish position. Yeah. What I would say to people who say that is, OK, how many women do you think it's OK to suffer to indulge the feelings of one male competing in the female well, what category? About, okay, but what know, give us a number. Yeah, I totally agree. And what about, I mean, I said to Paula, what about Laurel Hubbard, the New Zealand weightlifter, who qualified uh, for the first Olympics uh, a couple of years ago, having set records in the women's field, but she took the place of a woman weightlifter. The average age for the weightlifters in that competition was about half Laurel Hubbard's age. She'd been very unsuccessful as a male weightlifter by comparison, but she deprived a biological female of an Olympic place in that team. That, to me, is completely wrong. Now, someone said to me on TV in America last week, a female congresswoman, well, what would you do about it then? I went, well, fine, I want trans athletes to be able to compete fairly and to be able to compete. So they either compete against their biological sex, which seems to me physically fair, or they have a completely new category of transport. Why not? So there's, there's, there's two things here. Just getting back to the marathon. If, if, if Glenique wasn't eligible, then there's no discussion here. Mm. Because absolutely, if, if she wasn't eligible, then she wasn't eligible. What I'm talking about in terms of the marathon is, uh, when I ran the marathon, I was running with men, and women, uh, young people, old people, mm. all running together. And what I'm saying is, is this fear that the headlines around this is bringing up. It's bringing up a fear. It's making very vulnerable people, and we know that they're very vulnerable because mm. we're told by the stats that they are the most likely group of people to commit suicide. So this is not just about a fun run. Mm. This is not just about women who require vulnerable spaces. This is not what we're but, talking okay, about. OK, but Zuby, but Zuby yeah. I would say to that that, the, of course, 
I'm very aware of the issues that trans people have had and continue to have. But I think people like Leah Thomas, people like uh, Glenn Eek here, they cause massive bigger problems for the trans community. They make the whole thing look like a mockery. Yeah. They make a mockery of being trans. Yeah. And when you put your hand up as a six foot four inch biological man and say, I am now competing against women in a swimming pool, no trans person who doesn't want that attention is doing anything other than saying, this is making my life hell. Why are you doing this? Yeah, you're absolutely right in that the so-called activists are harming the group that they're claiming to advocate for, as well as harming 51% of the, of the whole human population. Because let's be real, all of this stuff, all the negative downstream impacts are on girls and women. They are not on boys and men at all. I'd say this whole thing is incredibly misogynistic, and I don't like to throw that word around too much. To take the conversation up a level as well, I have a question, and the whole thing is, why are we trying to force people and why are so many people entertaining the denial of reality itself? Yeah. Women's rights are incredibly important. Fairness in sports is important. Safety and security and privacy. All of these things are very important. The fundamental problem at the root of this is everyone dancing around pretending that a man can truly be a woman and a woman can truly be a man. This is not me being transphobic or hateful or being a bigot, anything like that. It's simply that reality exists. Biology is real. And is that reality a legal one? Because in this country, reality, it is. Reality, it is a legal reality, Zuby, that you can change your gender. You cannot change your biological sex. It's physically impossible. I'm, I'm saying to you, it is impossible it's a legal to reality it is that you can. Can you, so can you change your can, biological we can, sex? We can talk about biology, okay. and we can talk about we're, the legality we're, we're of but it. We're, we're talking about biology, though. We're talk this thing is about sport. This is about males and females. Well, the problem when we talk about biology is, okay. neither of us are scientists, but you, you don't and need I, to be a scientist you and I, to know male and women. You and I both know that it's a lot more complicated what's, than that. What's the complication? It's not as simple as, for me, it's very can I, simple. Can I become, can and I for become, you, it may okay. be very simple. But we are, I think we're being, can I you, think we're indulging an ignorance can you become, by not suggesting can you become, that can you become more male? to it than that. Can you become male? I don't want to be But can male. you become male? Is, it, is there anything that could be done that could turn you into a male in the way that I'm male and Piers is male? Is that, is ah, that possible? See, now, do you see how you've qualified your question? So you first can you, asked me, can, can, I, you, can, can I, you become, can a, I be can can you I become, become a, male? a male? And I would okay, suggest you probably yes, in terms of How? medically. But no, then, no, then you said, but but you, then you said, you know, you know then you said, true. like you and Piers. Because, right. And yeah. that's where we start to get complicated. Paula, I hope okay. we would have taken you a little further down your journey. <laughs> I fear when you, say, kindness, when you say you kindness. think you can become male, yeah. you can't because male is a well, sex. I can, have, I, can have a gen, I can have gender recognition, All right. can't I? I can Listen. legally become a male. We've got to leave it there, but you can't actually become a biological male. And nor can I, I nor can I, I would need to nor can I, you'll be relieved that. to hear, become a biological female. <laughs> because I'm quite tempted right now to start entering the cricket competition, <laughs> right? And smashing female biological bowlers all over the place and feeling good about myself. Only I wouldn't. I feel ashamed. I think, I think I, it's embarrassing. I think you're uh, pumping above your weight there. Well, you uh, wait till the Female Usain cricketers. Bolt, wait till female the, cricketers. As I, I say, wait till Usain kids. Bolt goes, I'm identifying as a woman oh, and runs in the 100 metre final <laughs> at the Olympics. And you look all go, well done. <laughs> well done, Usain <laughs> <laughs> well done, you say me. It's a joke. Uh, anyway, Paula, lovely to see you. Thank uh, you. Mara, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's going to be great to have you appreciate here it. in London. Really appreciate you coming in too. Uh, and go follow this guy on Twitter. He just passed a million followers on Twitter. So only seven and a half million to catch me. <laughs> uh, which I know he's keen to do.